Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Staff Gymnasium, home of the 2016 Rotary Holiday Tournament. In the first game, it is the Boston College High School Eagles going against Classical High School Purple out of Providence. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, we've seen BC High once this season. Classical haven't been so fortunate. BC High, a very high-powered offense led by Travis Evey and Carl Pierre. Yes, indeed. This BC High team is no joke. Classical High School has their hands full in this uh, first round of the holiday tournament. This is Victor Concepcion Santiago. He gets the ball over to Malik Chase, the captain of this team. Back to Santiago. Santiago has it blocked by Evie. Pierre able to fling it back inside, but it went out of bounds. So it will be a purple ball. Yeah, the guard for Glasgow will have to be a little bit more physically animated to go, go into the paint with this big BC team that they're up against. BC High is wearing their home maroon jerseys with gold and white trim. The purple, on the other hand, their away whites, purple numbers. Evie creating the turnover, and now it is Carl Pierre all the way in off the glass in in. And BC High strikes first, two to nothing, Eagles. Yeah, this classical team got to be very careful with the basketball. They have to protect it a little bit better. This BC team, as you know, is very good on defense as we just saw them just a week or two ago. Santiago over to Daniel Carlin. <coughs> and this is Spencer Riley coming down with the rebound. Riley to Pierre for three is good. Yeah, Pierre basically leaving off where he um, was hot on the floor against um, the boxes early on. Number 22 all the way in, he lays it up and in. Yeah, nice drive by uh, the guard there for uh, Classical. It's like both teams are playing uh, man to man. BC High committing the rare turnover. Providence with the ball. Five to two, the score, Eagles on top of the purple. Yeah, BC has the advantage underneath their center and forwards. Just as big, if not bigger, than um, Providence's team. We have learned that number 22 on Providence is Vincent Welsh. GPA made that look too easy. Providence coach calling a timeout down by five as we take a look at the replay. Carl Pierre all the way in off the glass, making it look effortless. Yes, indeed. You didn't see a lot of defense there. Uh, Classel's going to have to bang them boards and um, use the body on Pierre and make him think about when he does drive to the basket, he might get fouled hard or a body be put on him, but you just can't let him go in like that. Yeah, you can see right here, Pierre. There's a three from Pierre. And, and that's exactly what he did against the boxers when um, they played him about a week ago. <laughs> Seven to two, the score, BC high on top of classical. Santiago over to Chase. Chase bouncing it over to Anikon Oaken. Back to Santiago, stops and pops, and Evie with the block. Riley all the way in, lays it up, counted, and one. Yeah, definite height mismatch right there. Santiago called for the hold on that. 
Yeah, the guard for Clasco. He's going to have to pick his spots when he takes a shot. You cannot take block. a shot right there when you got the big man right around you. You, ha you have to be open in order to take that shot. A very severe height mismatch between these two teams and BC High working the full court press. Evie comes up with another turnover, spinning with it. And now he's in laying it up off the glass and in. That was, like you said, spinning with it. That was a pretty spin with the basketball on that steal. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. BC High up 11 to two. Offensive board, but down low is number 35, Jordan Miner, the 6'6 forward. And now Pierre with the dunk hanging on the rim. It's wow. too easy. It's <laughs> too easy. Wow. That was pretty. Santiago to Chase. Chase from way downtown, no good. Got to get a shot off somehow, right? Yeah. That was a good shot, he just didn't make it. Evie to Pierre, in for Miner. Spinning and called for the travel. Yeah, his feet were moving just a little bit too much. And we're gonna see that dunk just effortless. Doesn't exert himself to get up. No. He's already halfway up there. Yeah, Pierre's the real deal, folks. Excellent camera work down there by the BCA crew. Excellent camera work. Malik Chase with four on the shot clock, laying it up and in. And that's what they need a little bit more. They need to give him the ball when they work it inside. Evie to Riley up to Troy Sammons. Now Pierre for three is good. Outside, inside, Pierre does it all. Santiago over to Welsh for three off the back of the rim, no good. Into Pierre, over to number 22, Spencer Riley, and he lays it up and in. 18 to four, that BC was, High on that top. Was a beautiful pass, Matt to the open man underneath for BC. Yet another block, this one going to Jordan Miner. Travis Evie with it in for Miner. Miner spinning, trying to get closer to the bucket, lays it off the glass. He's surrounded by four purple and still able to get a couple of offensive boards. Yeah, nice job by Classical though. And Evie has another steal. Stopping and popping for two, no good. Sam is coming down with the rebound, putting it up off the glass, no good. Yeah, classical dodging a bullet right there. Classical driving inside. Welsh is blocked very viciously by Jordan Miner. Yeah, I gotta give Welsh credit for trying to drive it, drive into the hoop. He did draw the foul, so good job by Welsh. Welsh hitting his first, a couple of substitutions. Riley and Sammons coming out of the game in favor of Miles Owens and Mike Vasile. Two of two at the line is Welsh, 18 to six. The score, BC high on top. Yeah, this BC team has has a good bench. Miner laying it up and in. I don't think Classical has anybody really to uh, match with Miner right there in the middle. He should dominate this game. Along with Pierre and Eves. Kenneth Hill in for the purple. 
He gets it over to Welsh. Welsh spinning and has it tipped again by the Eagles. And now this is Miles Owens. Owens to Pierre, over to Miner, driving inside, wide open lane to the basket, yeah. off the glass and in. Yeah, nice job, he opened, opened, saw the lane open and went right to the hoop, laid it off the glass nicely. Long two for Kenneth Hill, 22 to eight with just under a minute to go in the first quarter. Owens called for the travel. Number 13, Daniel Licht coming into the game. You get a <laughs> Licht. Nice job, Matt, with these names, I'll tell you. For the moment. You gotta get the <laughs> like in Hanukkah. Yes. <laughs> Five second violation called against the purple. BC High takes over with 37.9 seconds to go in the first quarter. Travis Evie to Owens. Owens working his way around, lays it up, no good. The purple come down with the rebound under 30 seconds. Laying it up, no good. Evie comes down with the rebound. Ooh, looked like there was some contact there. I'm surprised there was no whistle. A seal for three, no good. Pierre coming down with the rebound, throwing it out of bounds off of Jordan Miner. Little trivia question. You can see the score on the um, screen, 22-6. Who was the um, famous uh, football player for the BC Eagles college team that played football for BC and uh, BC Eagles college team and went on to play in the pros. Actually, he went to the Canadian Football League, making it real easy for you, Matt. Then he came to the pros. He won about four or five uh, great cups up there, uh, which is like the Super Bowl. Matt, you're showing your age, buddy. Doug Flutie. I was thinking it? that, but the, the number I know Doug Flutie to wear is number two. That was in, Which in, in it, pros. He wore number 22 he wore at BC High. End of the first quarter, the score 22 to eight. The BC High Eagles lead the Providence Classical Purple. And I tell you, BC really didn't work up a big sweat in that uh, first quarter there. Definitely a mismatch as far as height goes. And BC definitely has the star players with uh, Pierre and Eves, and the big man in the middle who should have a field day this evening. Well, the winner of this game will face the winner of the next game, which is Brockton High Boxers versus the Charleston Townies. The Townies making it to the finals of last year where they were defeated by the Boxers. Of course, Brockton already playing BC High earlier this year. Lost by, I believe, 18 points. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. And it was the mismatch created by Travis Evie and Carl Pierre. That was the one-two knockout punch that they put on the boxes that evening. And they're back for round two. Coming up with a block was Owens, Evie with it. Laying it off the glass and in. Ooh, that was pretty. Providence with some outside shooting now off the rim, no good. Offensive board for number 35, no good, but he was fouled on the way up. Amadou Kaba. Nice job by Kaba to um, get that offensive board and wait for the right time to put it back up and got fouled.
three of three at the line now are the Providence Classical Purple. And they need to be excellent at the free throw line this evening. Perfect four for four for Providence. Carl Pierre with it, trying to create some space. Gets it to Evie. He stops and pops for three, and it's good. Sweet shot. Sweet set up there. Squared up. Shot that three like it was nothing. We're sitting right next to the BC High coach. The second that Evie caught that pass, he was like, it's easy. It's in. Doesn't even have to shoot it. It's already in. Count the points. It's all money. Pierre for three, no good, his first missed shot of the day. Owens coming down with the offensive board. Nice job getting it back out top to Eves as he directs traffic. Out of bounds off of Providence. Vasil in for Evie. Now Owens laying it up, no good. Hill working the other way for the purple. Long three, no good. Jordan Miner getting ready to come back into the game along with Matt Thompson. Evie to Pierre. Pierre to Vasil to Number 24, Troy Sammons, his three was no good. Classical needs to put some points on the board here. Especially if BC goes down and misses the shot, they need to come back and counter and make a shot. Hill short jumper around the world a couple times, no good. Yeah, tough break right there. That ball was in the, bat, in the rim cylinder and just came back out. Vasil and Owens coming out of the game for the Eagles. West wing. Get it in. Sent long in for Travis Evie, the co-captain, 5'11 guard. Thompson out to Evie for three is no good. And Welsh coming down with the rebound for the purple. Providence doing a good job getting the ball down quickly, and that's what they have to do with this big BC team. They have to get the ball down quickly, try to get a good shot before everybody's set for that big BC defense. Hill to chase, back to Hill from way downtown is no good. Miner coming down with the rebound was fouled by Amadou Kaba. Evie to Pierre. Pierre floater no good, offensive board up and in. Troy Sammons with that bucket for the Eagles. Yeah, nice job by Sammons. He was ready for that rebound. Was, had great position. Short jumper for number 11, no good. Offensive board there for Welsh. Now Chase from the free throw line is good. Yeah, nice hustle by Welsh underneath the guard to get that rebound, bring it back out, and get it to the big man, and he made the shot. Hand check called against Spencer Riley. Yeah, you can see right here, big man takes the shot and makes it after the good offensive rebound by Welsh, number 22, the small guard. Minor to Salmon, Salmon spinning, shooting, no good. And Glasgow takes over. Santiago over to Welsh. And another block, this one by 
Jordan Miner, who's in alone, and he dunks it, but the basket is waved off. He was called for a travel. Break there for classical. Welsh, when he takes that shot, he's, again, he's got to be really open because he doesn't have a quick shot there that he takes. It's kind of slow. Gives the defense time to adjust and make an attempt at the shot. Chase for three, no good. Miner coming down with the rebound. <laughs> Miner shoving, shoving off his gross. defender. What's that? Sammons for three, no good. Another turnover for the purple. Matt Thompson coming down with this one. Thompson all the way in off the glass and in. He a nice job by Thompson. He had a couple of guys on him and somehow got that shot off. Kissed it right off the rim, off the glass. 31 to 14. 31 to 16 now, BC high on top. Sammons off the glass, hangs on the rim, no good. Gets his own rebound, counted and one. Ooh, Classical got a little bit lazy under there on the defensive boards. They should have went up strong for that, let the man who shot the ball come back in from out of bounds and get the rebound. Troy Sammons doing excellent work right there, getting his own rebound. Yeah, that was great hustle by Sammons. You'll see it right here on this replay. Misses the initial shot, very good awareness. Very good awareness. Against three purple. Missing his free throw attempt, 33 to 16. BC high on top of Providence Classical. Hill out to Welsh. Welsh out to Hill. Hill for Santiago who bobbled the pass. And now a scrum on the floor, a jump ball called, and it will be a BC High Eagle ball. Yeah, this BC team hustles throughout the whole game. You can see the bodies on the floor. Miner and Evie in there against Amadou Kaba. Jordan Miner hitting the bucket there, 35 to 16, BC high on top. Yeah, Miner going in the paint, somehow getting that shot off. Kaba for two, no good. Vasile comes up with the rebound. Matt Thompson working his way down low, kicks it out to Evie from way downtown is no good. And a foul committed by Jordan Miner. Minute 36 to go in the first half. Kenneth Hill over to Chase, back to Hill. Hill back to Chase, now all the way across for Santiago. Stopping and popping for two, no good. Carl Pierre coming down with the rebound. Evie for three. This one's good from way downtown. Yep. He feels comfortable shooting that shot, and most of the time he makes it. Fouled on his way up was Anakin Odin. Yeah, that's what he has to do. Odin has to go to the hoop. And he seems to be doing that for the most part for this uh, classical team out of Providence. Missing his first attempt was Malik Chase. 52.3 seconds to go in this first half. 0 for 2 at the line, and Vasile coming down with the rebound. 
But those two free throws look like he's a little bit winded. I mean, they didn't, they barely made it to the rim. Out of bounds off of BC High, Providence takes over. Yeah, I think uh, Ease was trying to do a little bit too much with the dribble and everything, and uh, he dribbled out of bounds. Good call by the ref. Santiago for three, no good. Scrum on the floor, Miner fighting for it, jump ball. With 21.7 left to go. Yeah, nice job by 35, the big man for uh, Classical. He got right in there again, went down to the floor. Troy Salmon's back in, he replaces Jordan Miner. Sent in long for Hill over to Santiago. All the way across for Chase. Back to Hill and Hill is fouled by Evie with 9.1 to go. Yeah, there was some body contact right there. Good job of the um, classical guard going, going at Evie's. And Evie's got a little bit too aggressive. Hill is. Yeah, they, they called it on 35. A moving screen. He didn't set himself quickly enough. So I'm going to do Kaba committing the offensive foul. Plenty of time for a last second shot for this BC High team. Four seconds now. Three, two, Evie to Vasil. His three is no good. Kaba coming down with the rebound, but it won't count. 38 to 16, the score at halftime. BC high on top. Classical tried their best to um, stay with this BC team, but they were just too tall and too big for this small classical team that um, came out here this evening to uh, go, up, go up against this high-powered BC Eagles team. Okay, we're, we're going to get Matt. We're here with the head Matt. coach of the BC High Eagles. Coach, a very good first half. Talk about the star power and the talent of both Travis mm -hmm. Evie and Carl Pierre. Well, they're very good players, and then we need them to start off games quick like they did. It just you know, sets the tone for the rest of the game for us. 38-16, to 16, you're up by just about double. What's the game plan going into the second half? 0-0 zero, zero halftime, and we, we asked the guys to play 32 minutes hard, and we're expecting that the whole game. You've got a rotation of big guys going in. you got Jordan Miner, Sammons, all these guys rotating in. Are you trying to have them play even minutes, or are you trying to get some guys more experienced than others? No, we play them, you know, what we need. You know, these guys need a little break. You know, we can go to the bench without losing much, which is really a good thing. Well, 38 to 16 at halftime, BC high on top. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Boston College High School Eagles and the Providence Classical High School Purple in the first game of the Rotary Holiday Tournament. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, a very competitive first half, 38 to 16 for the Eagles coming into the second. Yeah, and that just shows you how strong this BC High team is, and um, they just exploited uh, Classical's um, height disadvantage on the floor both quarters, and it shows in the score.
Definitely Chase at the line, hitting his first attempt. Yeah, Chase is one of the few guys that has been able to really uh, do something against his tough BC defense. As he, you saw, he drew a foul, and he's at the free throw line. He made both uh, free throws. And they've been pretty good at the free throw line, um, Clasco, this evening. Perfect six for six now for the purple at the line. Evie inside to number 24, Troy Sammons, and Miner called for the travel. Yeah, good call right there. Miner moved his feet without putting the ball on the floor. Break right there for Classical. Chase working his way inside, stops and pops from the charity stripe is good. Yeah, that was a nice job. Drove to the basket, stopped, like you said, distanced himself from the um, defense, and a nice little short jumper in, in the paint. Travis Evie working his way inside, short floater, no good. Yeah, Evie looking for the foul, but no call. One handing all the way up to Simmons, a little bit too far, couldn't get a clean shot up. Miner coming down with this rebound. Costco has BC High right where they want him, down by 20, 40 to 20 the score. BC High doubling, doubling up Classical at the moment. Yeah, Classical trying to run with this BC team, but they a little bit better uh, shot selection on that last attempt by Classical. Number 22 should have brought it back out instead of trying to drive to the hoop with a, a mismatch on the height. Sammons in for Pierre, who spins, shoots, and finds the bottom of the net. Yeah, there's no mismatch on the height when BC High makes takes a shot. They basically have a clean shot for the most part. Number 21, sounded like he was hit as he shot. No foul called, BC High coming down with the rebound. Sammons for three is good. Yeah, he gets that uh, open shot. He, he Most likely he'll make that. Nice touch. BC High trying to send a message to the rest of the teams in this tournament. Doing a pretty good job so yeah, far. Yeah, doing a great job sending a message, Matt. Santiago with it for the purple. Over to Chase. Working his way down low and blocked viciously by Miner. Yeah. Good timing on that jump. We take a look at that replay of the vicious block. No soup for you. None whatsoever. Excellent camera work by the six time award winning director and producer and Emmy nominated Nubi Rateau. Yeah. Nice job, he's even got skills behind the camera. Three for Classical there. First field goal of the second half. Salmon's pump fake, now puts the three up. Way too short. Chase coming down with the rebound out to Welsh. Pump fakes, gets around Owens, his three is no good. Did not follow a shot. BC High came with, down with the rebound because of that. Yeah, that's one thing they, uh, Classical has to do a little bit more this second half is follow their shot. Because when you're down by 20 points or more, you really need to get a second attempt. You're already getting beat on the board, so why not follow your shot? Evie fouled hard. Took a second to get up. Kaba and Hill back in. They replace Welsh and Carlin for the purple. Hey, 
Evie one of two from the line, 46 to 23, BC high on top. Hill working his way inside, finds some space and puts up a short jumper. Yeah, Hill did a nice job. He took what the defense gave him. Hill coming down with this rebound. Halfway through the third quarter, BC High on top, 46 to 25. Santiago over to Chase. Chase for three is no good. Sam is coming down with the rebound, spinning with it, and now laying it up. Very nice finger roll. Yeah, good example of a following your shot. Chase should have followed his shot. It came right back out in the open. If he would have just followed it, he would have had that rebound. Hill to Chase. Chase to Kaba. Back to Hill. Hill for two is good. Yeah, he's got that nice little short jump shot inside the three-point line. Masil, the six-foot-three junior forward, getting ready to come back into the game for the Eagles. Salmon's fouled from behind. Yeah, he went over the back. Kaba called for that foul. Kaba with his weight, he needs to establish a little bit better position inside. And box out a little bit better if he can with his arms spread out. Vasil replacing Jordan Minor. Vasil two of two at the line, 50 to 27. Eagles on top. Salmon's called for the block on this one. And it is Malik Chase at the line for two shots. can hear the BC coach over here talking to his players, talking to Miles. He doesn't want to see freebies out there. Don't some Black Friday sale out there for classical. <laughs> Hill spinning, trying to get it to Chase. He does. Chase tripped up by Miles Owens, who comes up with a loose ball. Feeds it right to Hill. His three is no good. Oh, nice. Down low for Kaba, it is good. Excellent work there by Victor Santiago, yeah. who was able to one-hand that rebound as he was falling out of bounds. Right, and pass it at the same time. Tap it right to the center who was waiting for it. Evie oh. reverse layup is oh. good. Say, Carl Pierre has not had a shot attempt the second half. Unbelievable. Well, actually, he did. He started the second half with an uh, with an outside shot, but since then he's been he, he's been shut down. Salmon's coming down with the rebound, gets it to Owens. Owens to Evie, to Vasile. Vasile laying it up, no good. Clasco comes down with the rebound. Hill to Santiago, Santiago back to Hill. Offline, out of bounds, BC High takes over. Matt Thompson back in the game, he will replace Miles Owens. And a timeout called by Classical. Well, I tell you, Classical still hustling, but it's just a tough job they have Tough order to fill when you've got a BC Eagle team that just got the height on you and the quickness and everything else. A 52 to 31, the score BC high on top. You take a look at that scrum Owens. Is it a touch pass? Uh, 
Chase missed a three and again didn't follow yeah. his shot. But a nice goal able to yeah. get the rebound. Right, nice, nice play. Take this stoppage to remind you that Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. We are at the Brockton channel. You can talk to us about anything Brockton High, Cardinal Spellman, Southeastern Regional, sports related using hashtag BCA Sports. And that's good to know. Folks out there that want to find out when Brockton plays or. Any questions on city council meetings, anything like that, any special program airings, send us a tweet. There you go, tweet BCA. Nice tea, Matt. Oh, Matt, you're a real fan now. You got your boxer number one. Absolutely. Athletic Director Kevin Cairo coming over to uh, distribute some foam fingers. He said, Matt, I've been waiting to give you the finger all day. <laughs> T 38 seconds left in this third quarter. And BC is only up by 19 points. Salmon's in for Evie is fouled with 35 seconds to go. Jordan Miner, the six foot six junior forward getting ready to come back in the game. He replaces Troy Simmons. Evie two for two at the line, 54 to 33 with 35 seconds to go. Malik Chase working his way inside, laying it off the glass, no good. Santiago getting the rebound. Chase picking up the loose ball, he's double teamed. Now back to Santiago. And Carl Pierre with it, trying to create some space, spinning, laying it up off the glass, no good, was fouled on his way in, 4.7 to go. And Carl Pierre, is at the line for well, two I shots. I tell you, that was good defense, Matt, right there by number two for Classical, denying um, Paul Pierre the shot. It's like an old school hip check. Excuse me, Carl Pierre, I call him Paul Pierre. Paul Pierre is a... Um, Paul Pierce. Well, Paul Pierre, is a, isn't he a NFL football player, I believe? Maybe for the Giants. Three seconds left, BC high. Evie with a long shot off the rim, very close to going in. The buzzer sounds, the third quarter has come to an end, 56 to 33. BC high up by a cool 23 points. Miles, <laughs> there's not much hope left for classical. What does BC high have to do to send even stronger of a message to their opponent in what would assume would be the championship game of the Rotary Holiday Tournament. Well, obviously, to send a stronger message, they just have to keep playing at a high level here in this fourth quarter, even though they're, they're down, excuse me, they're up by over 20 points. So, um, I, you know, there's not much classical can do except for just keep playing hard, don't give up, and um, try to make the game a little bit respectable by not losing by no more than 20 points. We want to take this opportunity to thank the cast and crew for this first game of the 2016 Rotary Holiday Tournament. Start down in the truck at the helm, the head of the ship. The main man. The main man, the award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandeville. 
on replay, Mike the Postman Simmons. Who delivers. Who delivers, and he always rings twice. Every single time, <laughs> even on Sundays. Graphics, we have Anna Coots. The runner slash going to city council tonight is Aaron T-Bone. Up in the warmth on camera, we have the head of the Massasoit video department, Patrick Lease, the big tuna, the president. Big tuna. The doctor. Some very surgical shots. John, whose last name is escaping me right now. That's what Big Bad John. Big Bad John, I like it. And of course, who could forget as Jordan Miner, it's a layup. Who could forget the sixth time? Six. Did you say six? Six. That's more than one hand. <laughs> six time award winning director and producer. Carl Pierre in alone. He's going for the slam. He missed the one handed dunk. The whole BC High bench stood up. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other end, Daniel Carlin hitting a two. Yep, Clasco takes advantage of the miss. Where were we? Six time award winning director and producer and Emmy nominated Newbie Ratto. And a great cameraman. And a great cameraman. And of course, big game Miles Jackson and myself, the mad dog Matt Nelson. Mike Vasile is at the line. BC High's bench is still talking about that missed one-handed slam by Carl Pierre. And uh, I'm sure when they head, head on the bus back home this evening, they'll hear it from the, from Carl will hear it from his teammates. Sixty to thirty-five. The Eagles on top. Chase with a three, no good. Carl Pierre coming down with the rebound. Pierre to Thompson. Thompson in from Miner, who was fouled from behind. Jordan Miner at the line for two shots. Sixty-one to thirty-five. Two or two at the line was Miner. Santiago for Chase back to Santiago. Thought about the three. Instead turns it over and Carl Pierre is in alone again. And this time the two-handed <laughs> slam. He rattles the rafters here at Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, brings up teammates off the bench. Nice job by Pierre. Doesn't count if it's not a one-handed dunk, right? <laughs> Matt Thompson called for the travel. Yeah, good call right there. Good call by the ref. Owens in for Pierre, who's immediately getting some ribbing for that missed one-handed slam. Chase all the way in off the glass, no good. Jimmy Tan getting ready to come into the game for BC High. Owens one handing it down to Miner. Miner off the glass and in. Welsh was elbowed in the face. He's holding his chin. Yeah. yeah. However, he's not leaking. 
No, so he's he not. will stay in the game. I'm not sure if that replay showed uh, the classical player getting hit in the jaw. I'm not sure if it was the offensive player with the ball. Owens coming up for the steal, and he is in against Hill. Jimmy Tan coming down with this rebound. He's fouled on the way up. Jamil Davis, the six foot sophomore guard, getting ready to come into the game for BC High. Yep, Jimmy Tang doing a nice job just coming off the bench. Gets in there and just mixes it up right under the boards. That's his job. So he'll get a chance rewarded here at the free throw line. Kaba back into the game. He replaces Carlin. Yeah, Eves comes out, gets a good rest. I'm sure we won't see him the rest of the day. 4.59 left to go in the fourth quarter. 10 0 for 2 at the line. Davis to Vasil for 3, no good. Classical coming down with the rebound. Hill to chase all the way across for Welsh, stopping and popping off the Ooh, glass and in. That was sweet. Four twenty left in this first game of the tournament. Kenneth Hill over to Welsh. Ooh, nice. Still taking it out of the hands of one of the classical players. Yeah, BC doing a nice job boxing in the corner there on the defense. Chase all the way in off the glass and in. Ooh, nice job by Chase. He just powered his way in there. Vasil to Owens to 10. His three is no good. Offensive board from Matt Thompson. Long two is good. Thompson with the open shot, takes advantage with 3-10 left in this ball game. Yeah, Coach Bill Lahane giving some of his bench players an opportunity here in this fourth quarter to uh, showcase their talents. It looks like all of BC starters are not in the ball game. For good reason. Yeah. Just look at the score. Davis is blocked big by Kaba. You'll see this on the replay. Defense was good. The seal for three is no good. Should have been called out of bounds. It bounced off the rim and hit the shot clock. Will he chase down at the other end? Out to Welsh. Welsh has his shot tipped. Will Powers and John McDonald getting ready to come into the game for the Eagles. A good hustle there by Chase. He didn't give up on the ball. 
and was fouled. And he will go to the free throw line with 2.10 left on the clock. Chase spinning with it off the glass and in. Ooh, that was pretty. Two minutes to go, Providence is only down by 26 points. Kaba coming up with the rebound. He loses it to Davis off the glass. No good. Fouled on his way in. With a minute 36 seconds to go. Jamil Davis is at the line for two. Nine to 42 the score, BC high up and up big with a minute and a half. Hill thought about the shot from the east side of Brockton, opted against it. Davis coming up with the loose ball and here BC high goes out of bounds. John McDonald was the closest eagle. Yeah, they're trying to get a little too pretty going behind their back and um, lost the basketball so it'll be classicals ball again. Kaba looking create space unsuccessful. Noah Rothhar with the ball. He gets it over to Powers. Davis back to Rothhar for three is good. And the BC High bench is alive and well. Yeah, they're really giving their uh, bench players support out there. That was a nice job there, moving the ball around the horn and then finally in the corner for the BC High player to hit the big three. Spinning and shooting was number 23, Anakin Oaken. Twenty nine point six seconds left. The shot clock is off. Stay tuned for the second game of this Rotary Holiday Tournament. The Charleston Townies, the Brockton Boxers going at it. Hill missing a three. Santiago with the rebound off the outside of the backboard. Rothar coming down with it. Over to Powers, back to Rothar. 10 seconds left in this one. Jimmy Tan for three, why not? The big man coming off the bench, hitting that big lollipop three. Nice shot. The buzzer sounds, this game is over. The final score, a lot to a little. 75 to 42, the BC High Eagles win, and they win big over Classical. Yeah, well, Classical from the city of Providence got to see how the big boys play in Boston. And uh, there's some big boys there on that BC High team. And basically they just control this um, ball game on the offensive boards as well as the defensive boards. And um, it was not much classical could do, Matt. Well, Miles, the duo of Carl Pierre and Travis Eady were quiet in the second half. But the first half they opened with a bang. Yes, they did. Carl Pierre um, gave his presence on the basketball court along with Eves. They set the tone in that first quarter to show what Classical had um, in store as far as what they had to deal with. Miles, the outside shooting of the bench of BC High really did 
Classical in. Yes, they did. Um, BC High has a strong bench, Matt, and it just showed um, they never um, missed a step when their um, starters came off the um, floor. Hey, guys, we're downstairs. Yeah, so uh, BC, so we got Brockton coming up in the next uh, basketball game. Going up against uh, Charlestown High, the Charlestown High, uh, Townies. You can see Matt is trying to get uh, the coach for BC to uh, get a quick end of the game interview. The tennis Craig Sega with the, <laughs> the, the outfit. There you go, Matt, you're all set. Well, we're here with the victorious head coach. Coach, a very strong effort, and your bench even got some experience in the second half. Well, you know, we tell the guys, that you better be ready, and you never know when your time is going to come. And, you know, our guys have done a good job this year making sure they're prepared. So an interesting uh, way to go about this tournament, you don't know who you're playing in the championship game yet. It will be the winner of the, the next game. What's your strategy? Are you guys going to hang out, watch a little bit of the next game, see if you can get a feel for who you might face? Or are you going to prepare for both teams and, you know, find out when you get here? Well, we've played Brockton once, and we got them early. So we know it's not going to be the same team, that they will be better this time through. And I got to see Charlestown a few weeks ago, so we know that there's two good teams playing. Um, you know, we got a few minutes to enjoy this, and then... You know, let them enjoy it for the night, and we'll come back tomorrow. Last question. Carl Pierre missed a big one-handed dunk. The bench was really excited when he went up. How much ribbing is he going to get on the bus ride home, and are you going to give anything to him? He'll get a lot, and he deserves a lot. He missed the layup, didn't he? Well, that just about does it for the first game of the 2016 Rotary Holiday Tournament. The final score is 75-42, to 42, BC High over Classical Purple. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.